Hi, I'm Richard Barber, and I'm at Live On Air. And tonight we have two very prolific actors, very talented prolific actors, and uh, a couple of guys I've had the pleasure to work with uh, some seasons ago, but still it seems very fresh in my, my mind. I've got Paul Calderon and David Zayas, two very, very talented actors. Uh, Paul Calderon has been in so many iconic films that I, if I started to list all the credits for these two guys, I would be here till next Thursday, and then I still have a week to go. But uh, just uh, for some of you that may not get to the theater too much, Paul Calderon has been in Pulp Fiction, The Bad Lieutenant, King of New York, uh, Boardwalk Empire. Uh, his plays uh, the you know, beyond number. He's won Obies for Blade in the Heat, uh, Two Sisters and a Piano, Toilets and Cressida, and Cooper and his teddy bear on Broadway with Robert De Niro, of which I saw all of those, I'm very happy to say. It was a long time ago. I know he's, done, he's in Bosch right now, if you're looking on for something more current. Uh, David uh, Zayas has been in Oz. Uh, he's uh, we're very well known for uh, Dexter, uh, Bloodline, uh, Shut Eye, and Gotham. Not to mention he's been in so many plays that I can't beyond number. Uh, Jesus Hop the A-Train, uh, Lady of uh, 121st Street, Anna in the Tropics on Broadway. And both of these guys are co-founders of the uh, theater company Remind me of the name of the theater company. Primitive, Primitive Grace. Primitive Grace, I beg your pardon. Uh, they, and you're also co-founder of the Labyrinth Theater Company. And you're a member of the Labyrinth Theater yes. Company. And an original member. An original member of the Labyrinth Theater Company. And, uh, and I'm really happy that you guys are both here today. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having so us. So tell us what's going on with your next production of uh, at uh, Primitive Grace. Well, we have a production, uh, Quotidian, which is... Um, it only runs for um, four performances, and it's a journey of, uh, it's a personal journey. You'll see the performers telling their personal story going in, in a very interesting way. Uh, we have uh, uh, one of our David Deblinger who uh, uh, did Lucky Penny uh, recently, and he's um, he always joins us. He's, he's part of our ensemble, and uh, they, basically, a lot of the, our members saw him do that play and gave him an idea of uh, doing something really personal and expressing them and trying to affect the audience in a, in a very interesting way. We have a really great director, uh, Bruce Beck, and we'll see what, what, how that are comes out. these stories out. came from the cast members? Yes. I was wondering, how are they dramatized? Are they dramatized for each story or are they kind of thrown together? Quilt and then well, well, they each have their own story. They have their own way of, of doing it, and then uh, the director just kind of molds that into an interesting evening of uh, of theater. You know, is this a long one act or is it two acts? No, it's um, it's a long one act. You know, but it also includes um, music and song as well. Okay, well, that's that's interesting. Violin player, piano player, a jazz singer, a blues singer. So it's gonna be nice. Very nice. When is when is this? Uh, when is, when you open on this play? The 19th, 20th, and the 21st. Wow. The 21st, there'll be two shows, okay. Sunday. So back to back, huh? So uh, afternoon and then evening performance? Exactly. That's great. Uh, let me ask you something. You guys, have been, you guys have known each other since the 80s? Uh, the early 90s. 92? 92. 92, yeah. 92. 92. When, I, when I auditioned for a Labyrinth Theater Company, uh, Paul was there and watching my audition. Well, my first audition cop, ever. Yeah. I think he was taking his cuff right. uniform off. He started uh, as a police officer. Yes. Yeah. Actually, that was my first ever audition for anything. Really? Really? Yeah. Wow. And wow. You got in. I, I'm lucky enough I got in. Yeah. That's an all-star like, company. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. Yes, I was very lucky. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah. They were lucky to get you, I'm sure, too. Um, I mean, yeah, we were. Yeah. Every time I went over the years, I would go to the Labyrinth Theater Company, and I would see it. I still, he was starring in every one of them. Almost. I did a lot of plays, but you know the thing about when I went in there, like I had no experience, and the first couple of weeks that I went in there, I was watching these guys going, oh God, I need to catch up, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And so I, I, you know, you really, it inspires you to just try and get better and, and to uh, really mold your work ethic into something that's going to give you the opportunity to grow. As so how did a police officer, did that, how did that, you played a lot of cops. I play a lot of cops or bad guys. One of the <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how did that, did that give you some good foundation for uh, for acting? What do you think? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I, I think um, I didn't grow up in the best of neighborhoods. I think that helped me a lot Bronx, in observing, yeah, observing yeah. some characters. Uh, yeah. And as a cop, yeah, you have to pretty much size people up when you uh, when you meet them and 
yeah. kind of get an idea of what they're thinking. This guy, it, it, it's, it, it, can't, it couldn't hurt being an actor no. and getting that experience. as. That's uh, great work a, if you can get it, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's much better to play a cop on TV than to actually be a cop, I, at least for me. Who knows better, you know? <laughs> And I, you guys are both born in Puerto Rico, right? Well, uh, no, right? I, I'm, I'm, I, it says that in yeah. a lot of the yeah. things, but I was born and raised in the Bronx. Oh, my parents, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican, my parents yeah. are from yeah. Puerto Rico, but I was uh, born and raised in the Bronx. And you were born in Puerto Rico, right? I was born in Puerto Rico, I came here when I was six. Six? And I read that you were um, a, a semi-professional <laughs> baseball player. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was fortunate enough to have played with a lot of um, Dominican ballplayers in Central Park. There was a league called Double A, and basically yeah. it was a lot of um, Dominican ballplayers that hadn't made it to the majors, and they were still playing in Central Park. And I think I was the only guy from high school that they signed uh, to play. I was a pitcher. Wow. And, um, yeah, so it was... And I, and I, I, I now I know if it's true. I read that you had a shoulder injury, and that kind of gave you a different path to go? Yeah, like, you know, I was... The Pirates were going to sign me. Um, it was always my favorite team as a kid. Yeah, and, you know, I blew my arm. Yeah. That was a good thing because, you know, because of my size, not too big. I wouldn't have lasted too long. You know, never the wear and tear. You never I'm Gidry. I'm Gidry, yeah. Hey, there you go. Dick Louisiana Selma. Lightning. Yeah, Dick yeah. Selma. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm glad that that happened because it gave me a, another direction. And you teach as well. Is that right, Paul? Yes, I do. And you teach with Kathy, your beautiful I wife, Kathy. I teach with my wife, Kathy, yep, yep. who's a tremendous teacher, her, his first director. Let me ask you something. Um, is there a particular like, style of acting that you teach? Like, like the, is it like, like an um, actor's studio, or is it just all-encompassed? <laughs> you know what I mean? People say Sandy Meisner. Or, what, what, do you, you know, what do you think about that? Do you, do you well, have any labels that you put on those kind of things? Well, David has studied to... Meisner and has studied uh, the Strasbourg methods, yeah? Yeah. yeah, you know, I'm, I'm extremely careful to just, like, give in to just one particular style. I mean, I learned a lot from both styles. And, you know, you, 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 know, you take what is useful to you, okay. you know. More importantly, I learned from other actors. I learned from working with Paul. I learned from working with Kathy. I learned from working with the other actors that I've worked with. Um, uh, you know, there's only so much uh, you could... Um, grasp uh, in, a, in a class. I think that a class is absolutely essential. I think yeah. you need to go to, to acting. I, I feel you need to go to acting class sure. because it's going to give you the opportunity to discover things in yourself that it, it gives you that space, that freedom, that, that place where you could go and, you know, fail. Yeah. You can go and just, you know, not be, uh, not feel right about it and you could just figure out things that you can learn about yourself that would help you um, in the acting world. But it's, it's um, I, I don't think, I mean, if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to talk about you. So about working with Paul, basically uh, all the time as a director and as a, you know, a, an actor and him as a writer. And um, I think that uh, the word that's always there is, is truth. Truth, yes, you yes. know, and if uh, you find the truth in what you're doing, then um, you figure out how to get there, whichever style you want to get there. Right. It's it's the it's, truth uh, within the world of the context the truth of this within play, right? the the truth right. of the moment of right. the scene that you're playing. Right. And um, and and Paul is always very good in doing that, uh, particularly the first time we worked together in Divine Horseman. Uh, I saw that play. Yeah. It was a Philip Seymour Hoffman. That's right. right. And, uh, yeah, that was a terrific play, by the way. I really enjoyed yeah. that play. And, and the play. I mentioned that before, but it's really great. Or the play we just did, um, Fringe of Humanity. I saw that, that too. Did. It's yeah. wonderful. So it's it's always. Definitely we, high, high energy. Yeah, definitely high energy. Sleep. Well, that's the other thing. You know, we it's don't. Not <laughs> mother daughter, we, nothing wrong with mother daughter stuff. No, but, right. You know, it's not that. No, we like to, we like <laughs> to get in. We'll get in. We'll get in your. We'll get in your system. Absolutely. Both very powerful performances, really amazing Thanks. stuff. Really, just uh, really feel grateful just to be able to, to sit in on that. You know, as you guys know, I, as a writer, I, my biggest influence was Ronaldo Povan. And we've all worked with Ray. And he, when I first started working with him, he used to tell me to go see your shows because it rubs off. That's what he always said. To it me. sure does. It rubs off. You, you, know? Know, you know, with um, with Ray, it's funny because he was very, very instrumental in the way I write um, plays. Okay. Uh, the rhythm 
that he had Absolutely. and the power of the language that he had. And I was lucky enough to have been in, you know, originally Uncle Sam's Children, which is a, a little known play that he had worked on with uh, Joe Papp. I was lucky enough back, back in the 80s to have been brought in to do a reading of that and then Cuba and, and then uh, Super Fishbowl Sunday. And it was always about the rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm, yeah. the rhythm, incredible rhythm, you know, and uh, it just rubbed off. And, you know, I just want to give credit that he was very, very uh, instrumental in my writing in, in you know, in theater plays. Yeah, they used to call them the Povardian rhythms. And, and, yeah. and uh, Bill Hart would say, the Povardian rhythms to me. And then Ray would say, don't listen to that guy. I got that from Evan <laughs> Costello. Who's on first, who's on second? That's all we're doing here, Hob. That's what he used to yeah, say, but yeah. he was joking. Yeah, but he was joking. You know, he had right. good rhythm. He, was, he had yeah, rhythms. He had incredible and rhythm, yeah. Karen. And, you know, I, I, I definitely got a big fan of those as well. Yeah. I think it's like a musical piece, you know. It it's is. like, yeah. uh, you know, some of the, like the monologues and some of the, the, the language that we did both in Divine Horseman and in Fringe, you have to, uh, you need that musicality to, to find those, those spots for those moments. And even find that truth that you're talking about. Find that truth. The truth is in, the, everything's in rhythm. He, he said this to me, you know, you, everything's in rhythm. The, the earth spins in a rhythm. The, that, right? Right, yeah, the ocean comes in at a rhythm. And rhythms really sync us up together, so. Yeah, it's amazing that he said that because, you know, um, I, never heard, I never heard him say that, but I saw it in his work. And it's one of the things that I try to teach uh, my students. So you have to hook into the rhythm of whatever scene you're working in. Because without hooking into that rhythm, uh, you're dead. I once fired an actor. <laughs> really? I didn't fire him, but I said, it? it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> yeah. it's, not, it's not working. It's not easy. It's not easy. Oh, the rhythm no. is not easy. It's not easy. It's, it's, a, it's difficult. No. You have to really, really give into it. And you have to open your mind. And you have to be focused and and you have to be there but when you find it, it that's when where you the find magic it begins, yeah right? it's a magic yeah. Yes, exactly. yeah and one of the things that i try to instill in the actors is find the rhythm and you will find the truth i, I agree i couldn't agree with it more you know because if, from Ray. because if you try to impose your own rationale into something that is that is already already rhythmical you're going to interfere with that rhythm even though you might think, yeah, but, you know, I, I, I feel it. I don't care if you feel it or not. <laughs> just hit the rhythm. <laughs> What's yeah. my motivation? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Forget about it. Just hit the rhythm just and then it. You, it, it'll be there. Yep, it'll yeah. be there. The other thing he's always in stress, he goes, I write without sentiment. Did he ever mention that to you? Yeah, that's one of the things that we try to, yeah. um, yeah. you know. And that's a wonderful thing because yeah. you can feel it when you start to write or, 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 or get into the sentiment. You start to suck. You start to feel it. You right. feel it in your, your you, know? you start thinking about the audience and how they're going to perceive your work. Yeah. And that's one of the things that David and I um, uh, thought about when we were thinking about f forming a company, that we want to attack the audience. We, we want to make them feel uncomfortable. We don't want to placate them. We don't want to be liked by the audience. We just want to be like right in their faces and just challenge them. Yeah. And when he said that, he said to me, well, I write without sentiment. And he's calling me Harvey. I write, write without sentiment. Harvey. I said, what do you mean by that? Because what I mean by that is you will never hear one of my characters say to another character, I love you. Because now it's soap opera time and it sucks. Mm -hmm. you know, just let me out of here. But if, if you show it, yeah. they show up you know, during that wet ass hour and they're there for you. That's powerful stuff. Right. You know, so it's always also, also it, it, you know, you have to represent the society in which you're living in. You know, if you go all the way back to the Greek plays, Sophocles, and how he dealt with, you know, all those decades of war that the Greeks had to deal with 2,500 years ago. <laughs> if you read his plays today, it's all in your face. It's all about, you know, it's, it's all passion. Yeah. It's all about pain yeah. of what they were experiencing. So you, I, I believe you have to write from what's happening today. Which yeah. today there's a lot of opportunity to write about a lot of things. Oh, plenty of material. You just yeah. mentioned but, plenty exactly, of material yeah. coming our way. But yeah. um, I think that's that's really that's if you can <laughs> if you can uh, in, in 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 the most uncomfortable way get the audience to see that or to feel that. Yeah. It makes them think about what's happening in their lives and what's happening around them yeah. in the world. And uh, that's to me that's like yeah. that's great art. I, mean, that, I, that, I agree. Yeah. I, very well put. I remember uh, uh, the fringe of humanity. Ray would always say to me, uh, "I said, well, so, so why be a playwright?" He would say, "I want to discover what it is to be human." 
And I always thought that he, that's a really good, good jump off point. Right. Right. So what's the humanity in here? What, what makes us human? What does make us human as opposed to being subhuman or right. crazy or you know volatile? But what are the things that make us human? It's that compassion that we have for each other. Yeah. But like it, it's only found, regardless of what we do, it's only found like you said through the truth. Yes. You're not going to bullshit your way there. It's compassion and it's also flaws. We all have our flaws. We it's, try to hide them. We try to hide them or we try to like, you know, make up <laughs> for we it. Do. But, but we, we can tap them. into what makes us ugly sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And we all have that. Oh, yeah. Um, if, we can, if we can open up and just show that to people. It's to me that's that's it's liberating. Yes, I think it is. Yes. You know, you know, because you have to understand that the great works of literature, um, starting with the Bible, the Bible is like the most horrific <laughs> literature ever. You yeah. know, it's murder, incest, sodomy, just, yeah. just, just, you know, like just, and then you know Shakespeare and you know the Greeks as well. But with Shakespeare, you know, you have like that. You have Othello. Hopefully, you won't lose all the religious people that are <laughs> <laughs> watching at the moment. Well, yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll get over it. <laughs> you have Richard the Third, and yeah, you know, Richard the Third. He's a bastard. Usually, it's just you know about power, power, or yeah. like sex, money, or you know, or just you know, power, you know. Yeah. And that goes back to the Bible, you know, uh, Adam and Eve get the hell out of the Garden of Eden, you know, um, Cain and Abel. Hey, I like meat. I don't like vegetables. You know, God told, um, who was it that got, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, got me. one of the brothers. So anyway, he goes the guy. I'm a good over, Catholic guy, boy, but I forgot all that stuff. Yeah. He didn't want vegetables. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something as simple as that. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's there. Great literature is there. Because without that. Uh, without that, um, what we'll, what we'd have is kind of like mainstream TV, um, things that get um, uh, watered down. You watered down and just figured out very easily. Like he's the bad guy, he's the good guy. In great literature, sometimes you can't tell who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. That's right. That's right. You know, that's, that's right. That's that's not always wearing literature. the white hat. Exactly. 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 Sometimes it's more interesting when the white hat turns out to be the bad guy. Yeah, and, and vice versa. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There's so much more. So much more story in the gray area than it is in black or white. So let me ask you, in, in your theater career, if you look back at like one moment that you said that really just made you crack, made you giggle, made you laugh, made you say, geez, what, you know, what would that be? <laughs> On stage or off stage? <laughs> you know, I, 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 is there anything that comes to mind? I'm such a perfectionist, but uh, one time I missed an exit in, in the blackout. It was the, in London. <laughs> Really? In London, I, I, there was a blackout, and I'm supposed to exit and then uncuff the other two actors so they could go and do their scene. And I turned into the wrong aisle, and when the lights came up, I was in front of an audience member. <laughs> <laughs> and all I did was <laughs> smile at this audience member. And I kind of ruined it for him because there was another actor doing a monologue, and this audience member was just staring at me. I think I just ruined the show for him. And then the other two guys were just panicking in the back because they were still cuffed. Oh, and they had to go. So, I mean, that <laughs> that kind of made me giggle. No one else I'm but sure me. The director got a kick out of that, too, huh? It was Philip Seymour Hoffman <laughs> directing. Oh, it. really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, boy. But, you know, yeah. you know yeah. every once in a while that happens. Yeah. yeah. How about you? You got a good one? Yeah, yeah but, but I, can't, I can't tell it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> How about the second best one? <laughs> that one either. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Get thrown off the air here really quickly. You know? Well, anyway, so let's go back and let's. So once more, let's talk about the next play that's coming on. It's called Quotidian. Quotidian, Quotidian yes. yes. And that's a daily occurrence, right? That's, that means a, a uh, moment, a moment. a moment in time uh, that could be mundane, but within the mundane quality, it could also be uh, serve as a, as a shock, as a as an eye opener. Some, sometimes things that we take for granted. Um, can be very profound sometimes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You kind of see them through new eyes or a new moment or something. It gives new meaning to yeah. uh, to those daily daily occurrences. Do you have your interpretation? For, for well, you? You know, it's just simply, it's, it's, it, w it could be mundane to the person, but the what we're trying to do is make it interesting enough so that it's not mundane to the audience. You know, because it could mean something different. Something happens in your life, 
an experience happens in your life and it could be extremely um, uh, just it could change your life but it could mean nothing to other people or the other way around you know and um, it's it's I think that journey and that exploration of what they're doing um, is I think what I'm looking forward to see yeah I'm looking forward to going and seeing it too I really am so tell us again when it's going to be, and we'll wrap this up. So we're going to it's see. going to be on the 19th, yep. the Friday the 19th, the 20th, yep. and the 21st. And the 21st is a Sunday. It's going to be two shows. Two shows. At the Alchemical Theater in um, 14th Street, New York, Manhattan. All right. Well, be there. Be square. Yeah. Again, you thank you. You can also go to uh, Primitive Grace website, primitivegrace.org, mm -hmm. and it gives you all the information. You can get tickets right there online. you can get tickets right there. Yes. All right. Guys, thanks for coming down. Thank Paul you, Paul Calderon, David Zayas. I'm Richard Barber, live on air, and over and out. Thanks again. Bye.